World War II, one of the bloodiest conflicts in world history, led to the deaths of millions. The aftermath saw the victorious allies bring many of the war's perpetrators to justice, leading to numerous imprisonments and trials. But what happened to their children? In this video, you will find the answer. Before we move on, do not forget to subscribe to the channel for more informative content like this. Edda Göring Born on June 2, 1938 in Berlin, Edda Göring was the only child of Hermann Göring, a key figure in the Nazi party, and Emmy Sonnemann, a renowned actress. Her early life was steeped in the privileges of Nazi elite circles. Edda became a national figure immediately after her birth, when Adolf Hitler himself accepted the role of her godfather. She grew up in the luxurious family estate at Karinhall, surrounded by wealth and historical art, including gifts like the Madonna and Child painting. The end of World War II changed Edda's life. Her father was captured and tried for war crimes at the Nuremberg trials, while Edda and her mother were initially detained by U.S. forces before being released in 1946. After her father's suicide, Edda, at the age of eight, moved with her mother to a cottage lacking basic amenities, a stark contrast to their previous life of luxury. Edda attended St. Anna Magen Oberio Schule in Bavaria and later studied law at the University of Munich. She worked as a law clerk and had aspirations in the medical field. However, her life remained overshadowed by her father's legacy. Edda consistently defended Hermann Göring, stating in interviews that she remembered him as a loving father and saw him in no other way. This unwavering stance made her a symbol of persistent Nazi sentiments. Throughout her life, Edda was involved in legal disputes over the ownership of artworks and possessions she received during her childhood. Her requests for compensation were repeatedly denied, as these were considered products of the Nazi regime's plunder. Living a relatively private life in Munich, Edda Göring passed away on December 21, 2018, at 80. She was buried in an undisclosed location, reflecting the continued sensitivity and complexity surrounding her family's history. Wolf Rudiger Hess Wolf Rudiger Hess was the only son of Rudolf Hess, a prominent figure in the Nazi party and Adolf Hitler's deputy Führer and Ilse Hess. His early life was significantly impacted by his father's political activities and subsequent consequences. When Rudolf Hess made his infamous flight to Scotland in 1941 to negotiate peace, he was denounced by the Nazi government and imprisoned. This event drastically altered young Wolf's life. His mother was arrested in 1947, and he lived with an aunt until her release in 1948. Wolf pursued a career in architecture, studying and qualifying as an architect in 1961. Wolf Rudiger Hess dedicated his life to rehabilitating his father's image and challenging the circumstances surrounding his imprisonment and death. He staunchly maintained that his father's imprisonment and alleged suicide at Spandau Prison were a cover-up, suggesting involvement by the British Secret Intelligence Service to prevent Rudolf Hess from revealing potentially embarrassing information about British actions during World War II. Wolf and his father's lawyer arranged their own autopsy to investigate the claims of suicide. He authored several books, including My Father, Rudolf Hess, Who Murdered My Father, Rudolf Hess, and Rudolf Hess, I Regret Nothing, to defend his father and argue for his innocence. Wolf's efforts went beyond writing. He was deeply involved in political activism. He founded the Committee to Free Rudolf Hess, which garnered substantial support, including from German politicians. He worked tirelessly, advocating for his father's release and later arguing that his father was murdered in prison rather than having committed suicide. His advocacy painted him as a staunch defender of his father, maintaining that Rudolf Hess was a victim of the circumstances and not a war criminal. Wolf Rudiger Hess passed away on October 24, 2001, at the age of 63. In his final book, he expressed no regrets about his life choices, dedicated as they were to his father's cause. His life and efforts reflect the complex legacy of children of high-ranking Nazi officials, struggling with the weight of their parents' history and their own personal convictions. Gudrun Berwitz Born on October 8, 1929, in Munich, Gudrun Berwitz was the daughter of Heinrich Himmler, a key figure in the Nazi regime and the architect of the Holocaust. 
Growing up as a symbol of Aryan youth, she was deeply influenced by her father's ideology and maintained a strong devotion to him and his legacy throughout her life. After World War II, Gudrun and her mother were detained by Allied forces and held for four years in various detention facilities. Despite witnessing the brutal realities of Nazi concentration camps, Gudrun remained a fervent denier of the Holocaust and was unwavering in her support for Nazi ideology. Her unwavering belief in her father's innocence led her to become actively involved in neo-Nazi groups and movements that supported former SS members. Gudrun played a significant role in Stille Hilf, or Silent Help, an organization established in the 1940s to aid Nazi fugitives, especially in escaping to South America and to support their families. In this group, she was regarded as a Nazi princess, revered for her dedication to the Nazi cause and for providing support to former Nazis convicted or suspected of war crimes. Publicly, she was unrepentant and loyal to her father's memory, consistently defending his reputation. This made her a controversial figure in post-war Germany, symbolizing the unresolved legacies of the Nazi era. She married Wolf Dieter Berwitz, an official in a right-wing political group, and had two children. Gudrun Berwitz passed away on May 24, 2018 at the age of 88 in Munich, leaving behind a complex and contentious legacy. Martin Adolf Bormann Martin Adolf Bormann, born on April 14, 1930, was the eldest of the ten children of Martin Bormann, a prominent Nazi official and Adolf Hitler's private secretary. Growing up in the shadow of his father's role in the Nazi party, Martin Adolf was initially an ardent supporter of the Nazi ideology, being Hitler's first godson and deeply ingrained in the party's activities. However, Martin's life took a dramatic turn after the fall of Nazi Germany. In 1945, as the Third Reich collapsed, he found himself stranded in Salzburg with false identity papers. After German surrender, Martin learned of his mother's death and eventually confessed his true identity. It was during this period of turmoil and reflection that Martin converted to Catholicism, a significant departure from his Nazi upbringing. Martin's conversion was the start of a profound transformation. He served as an altar boy at Maria Kirchtel and later joined the religious congregation of the Missionaries of the Sacred Heart in Ingolstadt. In 1958, he was ordained a priest and was sent to the newly independent Congo, where he worked as a missionary until 1964. His time in Africa was cut short due to the Simba Rebellion, forcing him to flee the country. After leaving the priesthood in the early 1970s following a near-fatal injury, Martin married Cordula, a former nun. He became a teacher of theology and retired in 1992. Martin was notable for his public stance against his father's actions during the Third Reich. He toured schools in Germany and Austria, speaking about the horrors of the Nazi regime, and even visited Israel, meeting with Holocaust survivors. He passed away on March 11, 2013, leaving behind a complex legacy of transformation and atonement. Albert Speer's Children In their own special ways, Albert Speer's children managed to make sense of their father's complicated legacy as Minister of Armaments and War Production and primary architect of Hitler's regime. Among them, Hilda Schramm and Albert Speer Jr. are notable for their efforts to address their father's history. Hilda Schramm has been particularly active in dealing with her father's legacy. She chairs the Zurich Geben Foundation, a platform aimed at raising awareness about stolen Jewish belongings during the Nazi era. The foundation provides grants to Jewish women for various projects, contributing to the community that suffered immensely due to the actions of Nazi leaders like her father. Hilda has been committed to helping new immigrants and addressing xenophobia, reflecting her determination to make a positive impact in contrast to her father's actions during World War II. Albert Speer Jr., on the other hand, made significant efforts to separate himself from his father's infamy. He became a renowned architect and urban planner, focusing on environmentally sustainable projects. His firm, Albert Speer & Partner, gained international acclaim and was involved in numerous large-scale projects, including the European Central Bank Building in Frankfurt and the Expo 2000 in Hanover. Despite his successful career, Speer Jr. had to constantly grapple with the overwhelming shadow of his father's Nazi past. He was involved in projects to reckon with the historical burden left by his father and participated in docudramas like Speer & Hitler, The Devil's Architect. Thanks for watching. If you found this video informative and engaging, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more content on military history and strategy. See you in the next video.